Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. We are at episode 121. You didn't say it. I was giving you the space, man. What, that we made it? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't make it. I gave you the space, and I don't you didn't need say it. I, 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 I knew what he was doing. He, 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 set, he set you up. I did. You know, I was like, to, to ask I him reject, about it. I reject, I reject no, you for, thank you for he letting. set you up to ask him about I it. I did not set you up. That is actually not true. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking. Did you just forget? I was thinking about something. Well, I looked over at the monitor, uh. and I noticed that because I changed my mic, my my, my V-neck went to a really deep V-neck. A deep V. I was not pleased. With that. And some stop. You some people watching somebody. the video may be a little too excited about that. They're too so I, don't want right to, now. I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. So. All right. So uh, or on, disgusted one of the two. On from Nathan's V neck. Uh, my name's Jason. This is Ed. This is Nathan with a V neck. What well, we know uh, for sure is your wife, nor none of our wives are watching. So <laughs> it does not matter. <laughs> that is not, that happening. not happening. All right. So okay. we are. If it's your first time here, we are part of the teaching team at Community Christian. We're having conversations about how to think like Jesus in our world about issues. And today, uh, we got a question uh, that someone asked about an issue we've talked about here quite a bit. It's about the Bible, how to read the Bible. Uh, but it comes from a different angle, so I thought it would be helpful uh, to us to kind of talk about it again and come at it from this, uh, this, this person's perspective. She says, she, he, uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know if it's a man or a woman. I just <laughs> okay. assumed. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. Here's the question. My daughter wants to start reading the Bible. She asked me if opening it and reading from cover to cover like any other book was the best. I didn't know how to answer that. So can you please provide your recommendation and also suggest an easy to understand study Bible for a preteen? So the daughter is preteen. And uh, so let's answer the first question first. The daughter wants to know, is opening the Bible and reading it from cover to cover the best way to read the Bible? And I think all of us would say no to that. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, now a lot of folks would disagree with that. Yeah, I know. I just um, don't think so. I don't think that's the best. I don't think that's the best way for anybody to read the Bible. No, no not, not in the beginning. I, I, there is a reason to read it that way, sure, and sure, there are sure. good things behind it. I'm just not sure if you're talking about devotionally. There's a good reason to study it that way. I think yeah. it is a story that's being told, but you have to really... There's some understanding you have to have to get to that, mm -hmm. uh, not get bogged down. It so. really, to me, feels like jumping into the deep end of the pool too early. Yeah, that's exactly right. So. Yeah. Well, and I think it, you know, I know we've talked about this a lot before, so I try not to repeat myself too much, but I'm sure it's I bet I know what you're going to say. I don't, it, it's, not, it, it's not meant to be read by yourself, so mm. I think I think reading, the benefit you have is, I, I and this is an assumption I'm making, if it's a preteen who goes to our church, the best way for your preteen to use it is we give take-home devotions that go along with what they are learning in in um, in their class, mm -hmm. and you can take those and then read from there. And so sometimes it'll be stuff from the New Testament, sometimes it'll be stuff that's from the older part of the. Uh, sometimes it'll be like a psalm. Sometimes it'll be different things. But if it's reading alongside what they are learning in church communally. Uh, there is there is someone to help interpret those things. That's right. Um, and so so I do some of that with with my kids. I've got a preteen, uh, and we do some of that. But sometimes what we'll do is we'll every morning before they eat breakfast, we we read through a um, a, a story in scripture. And normally what we do is we'll start with uh, we'll start with a story from Jesus. Uh, so uh, we, recently we were just starting the book of Matthew. So. We read the birth of Jesus. Did you read the genealogy with? We them? did not read the genealogy. Oh, okay, but I read the uh, I read the birth story of Jesus, then read the story of them fleeing to Egypt, mm. um, and then we actually paused there because then we have a uh, we have this it's a storybook Bible, uh, which is beautifully illustrated. Um, Jason will put a link to it in the description. Mm. <laughs> and, um, but it's not. That's it's a callback right there. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Great. I, Hope I, I didn't forget last week. That's <laughs> right. But anyway, we we then went back to the Old Testament uh, because in the older in the Old Testament stories uh, sometimes were four or five chapters long, and this book will condense them. So we would take if it referenced uh, uh, Egypt. I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, this is referencing actually that you're supposed to be thinking of this story of. Joseph, and then of Moses, and then of this. And so we'll read the Old Testament in light of the New Testament. But all of that, you don't have to know all that. All of that kind of stuff is provided for you by our children's ministry. Mm -hmm. There are devotions that are in there. It'll say, read 
these verses. And you can have your kids sit down with that devotion, read those verses. I get that they may want more, and I think that's great if they want more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But I would, if this, and I, I can't remember. Yeah, the, the question was from your, from your daughter, you know, how's the best way to start reading the Bible? Um, and I think we've said this many, many times. We always encourage people to start with Jesus. Yeah. I if, would. if your preteen has certainly never decided to crack open the Bible and read it, I would always start with Jesus. We often particularly say start with the book of John, yep. which is what we've been yep. teaching since the first of the year. If they're ADD, start with Mark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say for I would say for I would say even for kids, Mark is how yeah, often it is. It's so action oriented. It is. And I would I would encourage them depending on their level of reading. Because this is what I'll say, just as I've got four kids and I'm trying to get them. When they when that's like a big deal for them. I've got uh, two that don't yet have their own Bible because that's part of our, uh, you know, you have r- r- whatever you call rites of passage or whatever. Mm-hmm. That when they get to a place where I realize they can now read without my help, that's one of their things. We go on a daddy date. We pick out their their own Bible that they get to have, and then at night I encourage them at night to read on their own, and in the morning we read together. But even even just reading the Bible, uh, even. Newer readers, and maybe your preteen's a great reader. The mm-hmm. Bible's just a difficult read when it you is. are learning to yeah. read in general. Because when they get to Beersheba and they get to all these other words, it's very, um, it's a little anxiety producing. It's frustrating to them. Yes. Yeah. So like I've just, seen a lot of adults who try to read the Bible out loud in public, and they oh, get yeah. freaked out when they get to, right. you know, yes. names and things like that. So you don't want to do that to them. Either. No, it's, that's what I mean. Is I think I think Mark and John has long. Uh, sections of it where it's mm-hmm. Jesus going, I and the Father are one, and the Father and I are one. And then mm-hmm. if you are one with me, you will, it's like for a little kid, they're I'm like, I'm the good shepherd and I'm a door. Uh-huh. Which is why <laughs> I think it's really important just to reiterate, maybe the best way for you, for you uh, for your preteen to read is for them to read with you. Mm. Uh, that it could be a family event or that you read the same thing they're reading and you talk about it. Uh, I just think for the sake of your preteen, like he said, start with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um but you guys read it together um, because I, 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 I think the habit of reading your Bible is incredibly important to teach our kids. Mm. Just that we read the Bible, but to help set them up for success, to say, I want, I, and I, my wife and I have this a lot, I don't know that they always understand what they read, yeah. but that's okay because yeah. I don't always Me understand neither. what I that's read. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but that they would be able to talk about it and have that. So I agree, mm-hmm. starting with Jesus. I think and one and, thing, I, well, go ahead. You no, know, I'm okay. I, told, I was going to go back to that thing of, go. I I think for a long time with smaller children, preteen, I, what you don't want them to do is become confused about something that's said that makes them question Jesus in general. Right. The heart of Christianity is the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus is the person we follow. I want them to fall in love with Jesus I don't want them to get distracted by something Paul said, even though I know Paul is ultimately backing up right. everything Jesus said. It's just hard to understand Paul sometimes. Oh, yes. And I wouldn't want a preteen to get distracted by that right. mm-hmm. and ask you questions about things that then make them go, well, that sounds weird about what Jesus. You want mm-hmm. them to know Jesus. What I was gonna, yeah. What I was gonna address now, I think, um, is the parent who asked this question because I, in my experience, I've come across a lot of parents who you also get a lot of anxiety over yeah. the fact that your child is reading the Bible and you are, are worried that you don't understand as much or you don't right. you don't have the ability to answer the questions. And so I would say to you, uh, number one, you know. It's okay to not know. Right. And it's okay to say, I don't know, and I'm going to help you figure that out. And then, again, like Nathan was saying, enter into community, whether it be with us or your small group or what, whoever you are walking with Jesus with, and help one another come to those conclusions. I also say, and this is something that we've been um, pushing for a while, there is a, some really great resources out there on the Bible, particularly the Bible Project, yep. oh, yeah. that would be a huge help to you as you read the Scriptures. If you don't know about it, um, I guess I'll link to that in the description. Well. <laughs> we'll link it. Um, BibleProject.com. BibleProject.com, I think. Yeah, or just I think Google. So. Google the Bible Project. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about it. He's going to put the link I'll in put the link in the description. <laughs> but... They have produced these, ama- I mean, these videos are videos you could sit and watch with your kid. Your kid will understand, and so will you. It, it, is, it is a great tool to help you understand 
what's the Bible all about, right. about yeah. certain topics that you come across, certain books of the Bible. The intros to the books that the Bible Project has done is some of the greatest stuff I've ever yeah. seen. About I do it with my adult, adult oh, yeah. discipleship. Anytime we're reading a new book, mm-hmm. I ask them to watch the introduction video from the Bible Project. Yes, It gives you the overall theme of it. It mm-hmm. explains it. They're done an explainer video kind, uh, you know, line drawing. It's beautiful. Yeah, and it's very animated. I mean, it's almost cartoonish. Your yeah, kids will, will like, it. like it. It'll be entertaining to watch, and you will learn. I learn something oh, every yeah. time I watch them. I oh, go, yeah. "Wow, that they just took that verse or that uh, scripture, that book, and they put it into a light that I had forgotten or I hadn't right. seen in a while." So. That's a great resource to help you get a little more confident about what you're reading. Uh, so use that. Um, certainly, you know, I think this goes without saying, but just make sure that when you read, you read in a translation that makes sense uh, to everybody. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, and there's lots of them out there. I mean, there's no one right one for me. I, I like the New Living Translation these days. It's good. Um, it, it's very understandable. If you struggle to read, I know there's one... I think it's still out there. It's called like the New Century version, mm-hmm. and it was mm-hmm. it was intentionally written for people who struggle to read. Yeah, um, common English. Uh, common English yeah. is common a good English one. Is a good one. That's the one. Um, I like there's it. several that are out there. So you know, find something that as you read it, you go, okay, I, these words make sense to me. I'm understanding it. Well, and I would. Um, you can. I think on most translations, if you Google mm-hmm. reading level of that translation, yeah. it'll yeah. tell you. And just be aware that when they say something's a seventh grade reading level, often people who've been to college still struggle to understand some of the stuff yes. at that level. Yeah. Well, that's I would I would go lower than you think you probably need. I know yep. your kid is super smart. Oh, yes. All of our children are. Well, and mm-hmm. I would say too, I think there's nothing wrong with your preteen. Just to once again, because your goal is not to get your preteen to understand everything no. about the Bible. It is to teach them to love Jesus. That's right. And what you may want, and this was the one, and we can maybe put a link in the description to this. The, uh, we will. The storybook Bible that we use uh, is called, the. I think I just looked it up, it's called the Biggest Storybook Bible. And uh, it um, its reading ages are from four to nine, and it condenses. Now, it's big. It's probably this big because it is fully illustrated pages. I mean, huge. They're beautiful. I love to just, I'll just sit and read it sometimes because it's, just beautiful to look at. But the the reading ages is all of my kids can read it uh, and understand it. And it's very storybook-like in that it breaks the entire Bible into chapters. And very much like the Bible Project, even the Old Testament stories, they put them in the light of Jesus. And mm-hmm. they'll end certain stories going, and this is why God had to send a Savior. Or this is why something like this. And I think even though sometimes there's something in us that wants, I want my preteen reading the exact words of Scripture, it may be better for your preteen in their journey towards loving Jesus and understanding the full scope of the Bible to be able to sit down with a storybook Bible like this and they can read it like it's a chapter book and it gets the story of the Bible into them so that then one day when they're older and they're maybe a better and more confident reader, and now they've got this whole story of the Bible in the back of their mind. Uh, then they can pick up individual chapters maybe as a teenager. But you've already taught them the habit of every day we read the Bible or every day we do this. So I also want to encourage you is that that it, it doesn't have to be I sit down and exactly read something that's got the verses that's listed right. out for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because all once again, it's about the community of yes. it. And so. Yep. Yep. And last thing as we wrap this up, and I'll just... I'll speak right to the parent. How cool is it at, for as you for you as a parent yeah. that your preteen has asked you that question? Yeah, that's yes. awesome. You should be proud, and that's an amazing step. It it tells me a lot about your preteen. They are at least hungry for God's word, and yeah. that that is a very good place for you to be right now. So good job on that, and uh, God bless you as you go forward and do that. And we're here for as a resource if you need more help, and you, you know, and I don't put all the links that Nathan said I would. To all the stuff, you know. You well, in our family me. ministry, would be happy oh to help you. Yes. Yes. Say, I would yes. have them talk to the. Definitely. I would have you talk to mm-hmm. the, your child's teacher and say, "Hey, what are you guys learning? Show me where those take-home cards are. Yep. All that kind of stuff." Of because um, even if your kid loses them, they're available online. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We have yep. and we have an app that um, has a lot of that. For the Parent Q app, that mm-hmm. Parent Q app is amazing in that it tells you questions you can ask them yeah. that yep. help you have conversations yep. about it. And 
one final plug. If you have not participated in any of our uh, family events mm-hmm. that we've been mm-hmm. doing each month, mm-hmm. if you come to those family events, you will then also build relationships with other parents who are farther along than you are, and you can learn from them as well. That's yep. what they're there for. There are parenting coaches that we uh, put at each of those events. And so if you're not participating in those yet, I highly recommend those. That will help you as well. You can network and do this whole thing in community. So it's awesome. Last plug. All right. There you go. So, all right, um, as we sit right now at this moment, uh, there is no question on tap. I have, uh, we have answered them all. So here's my warning. If you guys don't want Ed to talk about what's so great about COVID, um, <laughs> you better write us some questions and give us something to talk about. Or, or we just will not have episode 122 and we won't have made it. We won't make it. Ooh, it's always that's a threat. Even worse. We won't it's have always made a it. Threat. Now, I'm, now I'm scared. <laughs> All right, so uh, y'all get after it. Y'all give the questions, and we will give the answers. So see y'all next week, hopefully. Bye.